right. We are on now to day four, which day four will consist of the straps and uh, all of that assembly. And then tomorrow we will just finish up the bag. So we are almost there. So you should have your two tabs. And the only reason, uh, again, I'm going slightly out of order with the book or with the instructions say only because I like to sew all my things up um, at one time. So you should have your two tabs like this. Well, it's it's uh, your connectors. You should have your two tabs like this. Your one like this. Your two like so. Uh, and then obviously your foam and then you need two-thirds yard of this um, so I just kind of measure right now I think what do I usually cut it at is it actually saying here I think it just says two-thirds yard it doesn't actually tell you how exactly how long but two-thirds yard I mean I'm sure there's some calculation it's about you know 25 26 so that's what I cut mine at um, so if you want to go ahead and prep that now, you're more than welcome to. We will be using it uh, if you hadn't already done it. So here is my nylon. All right. So we're going to start with this guy. You're going to take it to your iron. I'm just going to finger press it so you all can see. And you're going to fold it in half. So you see how it has a line right here, right? And then you're going to fold both sides in to where it meets. So they meet like this. And then you're just going to fold it in half. So now you have no raw edges. So you can, like, honestly, you don't actually have to use your iron. It just depends. Um, I actually never done it with this woven. I've never made a bag with our woven yet. So um, you can just fold it in half. And then I made it with other woven. A lot of times they're a little too stiff and you can't do this. So that's kind of cool. Um, so then this is your strap. And what you're going to do is edge stitch, one edge stitch, whatever, down this. I personally just make it one long stitch. I go down. I pivot, I go at this, and then I go down this one, and then I pivot to make it um, all sealed in. You don't have to, obviously, because your edges are going to go into your bag. Um, and then basically, you're going to do the same thing for these guys right here. Um, you're going to fold in, fold in. Nope. The little ones are a little harder. Oops, I think I did that wrong. I did. Okay. Take me a second. Yep. So this one is a little different, right? You're going to fold the short ends in together. So fold that in half. And again, you can finger press it. You can whatever. Um, push. You fold it inwards. Push. And then fold it in. And push. And then fold it over each other. Um, it's about... It should be about an inch. Okay, that's what this is. I think these actually call for three fourths, but I use inches. So, and now you have these. And you're going to do the same thing to this one. Again, you're just going to fold it in half. And then you're going to fold it again. And again. And then close it up. Okay. Like so. Okay. And again, you're going to sew it just like you, how I showed you how to do this one. Because that one's a little less than an inch. Um, and so go ahead and go do that now. And then come on back. All right. So now we got our pieces right here. Right. Um, if you didn't already do this, go ahead and do it now. And what you're going to do is you're going to take a back panel. Um. 
and your piece right here as you can see and you're just gonna mark where the straps will go so you can just mark it with your marker little strap tab or pencil or whatever you choose to use is fine And then even after I do that, like see, because I did it, I like to fold this in half. Because sometimes, like this, you can see that one side is off a little bit from the other. And so you just kind of trim it up if you if you choose to you don't have to I just typically do um, so that now my things look like they should off just a baby bit and that ends it. Okay, so move this guy over here. I'll show you what I'm doing in just a second. So, oh. I folded it in half, right? And now you can see where they meet each other. So I just wanted to make sure that they were the same, regardless if it wanted to fold it in half. If they're off by a little bit, once you sew this up, it's not a huge deal. I'm pretty sure I just marked my face. It's not a huge deal. Um, so, now all you're gonna do is then There. My uh, D rings. You're gonna take your D rings. I love Rainbow Hardware, by the way. Um, I'm like obsessed with it, even though it costs a little bit more money. Um, Emmeline Bags Hardware. They're the only place um, I found that sells it, like on a regular basis. I find it like here and there sometimes, but their stuff is just quality. Um, and all you can do is put these in here like so and so you'll see that it's really small so on some bags you know that you're supposed to like do a line right here you don't need to do that on here you're just literally gonna have like the babiest of tab at the bottom okay so and then you can just match this up and you'll do the same for the other one So the reason why you have two is so you can switch sides. So you're just going to go ahead and um, clip it or whatever. We're going to go base it down in just a second um, once we do the next step. So that's all you need for this one. Okay. Then you're going to take this one and fold this puppy in half. Doesn't matter how you mark it, you can mark it with a marker. Like mine is, is washable, like basically either I can take a little bit of water to it or I can just rub it off. Uh, but you could use a pen too. But you're just gonna mark where the middle is, okay? And then you're gonna take this and place it on one side of that mark. And then the other one on the other side. And again, just clip them in place, and then we're gonna take it over to the machine and baste them, okay? Whenever you get done. Um, this one doesn't particularly matter. Oops, I think I did that one wrong. It doesn't, there we go, that's what I wanted to do. Um, so you kinda wanna keep it one continuous, so it's one mark all the way around. And so when you pull it up, it looks like this versus how I did it the first time. Um, so now that's in the middle of your guy right here. So you're going to set that aside. 
And then we're going to talk about, because we're just going to take these all over to our machine and do it all at one time um, versus, you know, coming back and, and all that. Uh, again, you can even measure your stuff again after, you know, you cut a little bit off uh, or such. And next up, you're going to take this guy, okay? Right sides together. You can pin it, you can, I just pin it in a few places to keep it together. It's pretty easy. There's no foam, there's no nothing right now, okay? We are going to put our foam in it later. The reason why this does not get foam and then turned is that you really want to get that foam back out. You have to be able to bend um, the foam to get it in here, okay? And we'll take, and I'll, and I'll show you how to do that later. You know, just a few pieces here and there. There we go. But what you're going to do is you're going to leave a gap. Four, four inches or so. <coughs> Ooh, bless me. Um, right here. Then leave. So sometimes I'll put ones like that so then I know where I'm stopping and starting. You're going to put uh, a gap where you don't sew right there. Okay. So go ahead and take all that over to your machine right now and do that and then come on back. Okay, so now we have this one. There's my two things. Here's my this and I have this. Okay, so on your, so you can put these two things aside for right now. Okay, we don't really need them. Um, we're working on just our tab. And what you're going to do, um, you're just going to trim the seam allowance, okay? Not a lot, just enough that so when you turn it, it's a little not as bulky. Especially around the curve. Again, you could um, use pinking shears. I actually bought some. And I don't like using them, so they just sit now. I don't know if I just didn't get good ones or what, but they're like a pain in the butt to use, so. Got all that trimmed up now. And so now what you're going to do is you're going to turn it um, right side out. There's no really easy method to do this. You just kind of push it and then pull. I'm sure that some people have like turning tools or stuff like that that makes it a little easier. Obviously you can use those. Um, I just use my fingers. And then try to push it out as much as possible on the round part. And then the same thing with the top, you're just gonna. Pull it the right way. Really, this part that gets tricky is that little skinny part right there. Um, but once you get past that, it's pretty, it's pretty easy. There we go. Um, you can take it to the the iron again and press it. Uh, and there's your little gap. Don't forget about it. And then I like to take usually my chopstick, but today my Allen wrench. No, maybe this might not be long enough. I'm like my chopsticks. Um, and push out 
your end pieces here. As much as possible. One. There we go. Now, for the super duper duper fun part, okay? So your foam comes in. You could even check it. It should almost be perfectly the size. If it's not, um, mine is a little big. Right here, see how it's a little big? You can just trim it down. It doesn't need to be perfect. Um, you can just trim a little bit off. Just foam is kind of a pain in the butt to, to cut in general. Um, but a lot of times, even when you measure, it's not necessarily perfect. Uh, and then it just kind of, you want it to, it's going to fit real snug. But you want to make sure that you can get it to fit. So. Mine is basically in. Oh, that's pretty good. I can see a little bit around the outsides, but not enough. Okay. So now you're going to take your piece of foam and fold it. Okay. And that hole you left, you're going to push it down in to your, to your strap. Okay. Again, this is in, it's a little time consuming. Um, I might pause it in a second so y'all aren't watching me struggle. Uh, and you don't have to watch all of that. But you're basically going to push it down. So this is why you have to leave the hole in the middle and not at the top. Because there's no way you would get this all the way down there. And try to make sure when you folded it that you don't then fold it in the opposite direction as you're pushing. Because obviously that's going to make your thing a little wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this while I get this part down in there. And then I'll start it back up. Okay, so now I have it all the way down in here. It's all the way down to the bottom. And so you're basically going to do the same thing. You're just going to kind of fold it. Um, and then, again, try to make sure that you know the way you folded it on both sides. And you're just going to shove it up. That side's a little easier because you can just kind of fold it and push. The other side's a little harder. So it's a little harder to, to push it in there. There we go. So, now you have your foam in your thing, right? Um, I would go give it a little press. Just give it a little, little baby press. And then you're going to fold where you didn't trim your seam allowance, right here. Um, you're going to fold that so that you close the seam, okay? And then what you'll do is that you will run two stitches. You will run, look, I'll show you an example. Huh? It's nice when I have one available, huh? Um, you'll run two stitches. One as close to the edge as you can get it, and then another one about... I mean, I don't really measure, but it's it's just a little bit right parallel with it. So you're going to run two of those just like that. So go ahead and do that and uh, head on back. Okay, so your piece is all done. Um, so actually looking at the instructions, it's one eighth and then a half. Um, I think I did one eighth and, a, and then a fourth on this one. If it doesn't really matter, as long as you have two stitches, is just to make sure that the foam is locked in place. So... Our next step now is to take our nylon and then uh, webbing and what you're going to do is you're going to cut four inches. Okay. Then you're going to take your parachute clip and then the piece without the prong. So this guy right here, you're going to run this through here. Okay. And then 
You're going to match them up until about there's a half an inch right here and you're going to fold that half an inch over from here like this. So now it should be locked, okay? And then, so you could just use a little clips here like so. And then you're going to, what does it say? So you're going to measure two inches up from here. So you can fold it in half to make sure you know where the middle is. Just like we did before, we fold this in half and it kind of creates a, a crease. Then you're going to measure two inches um, and then that is where you're going to place your nylon. Like so. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go sew a box and then I make a diamond in there. And so go ahead and do that now and come on back. All right, so that's done. Here you go, it's attached, right? Just put that to the side. Now you're gonna get your swivel clip and then you're just going to push this through and then you're just, so you don't have to, but I fold over the raw edge and then push it down. You can just finger press it. It doesn't particularly matter how much you do, as long as you give yourself enough room to, um, you could also use rivets for this for sure. Uh, I wouldn't use them for the other nylon piece, but you for sure could use them for this. Um, and then you're just going to go sew that down. I'm going to go ahead and just wait um, and do that all that in one step or whatever. So now your thing is like this. And basically, you're going to take this guy. So I can never get these to go right. Go right. But supposedly you're supposed to place it on the wrong side of the parachute. And it takes me a few times to figure it out, basically. Um, and then you're supposed to just take it down the buckle and then it's supposed to lock but like for some reason I don't know if I just do it wrong or what it takes me a couple times to figure out there we go um, how to get that correct so and so sometimes I'm like oh well now it's correct that way and so that's why I like to wait sometimes before I sew it down because sometimes my thing is the wrong way and I like them to go in opposite directions um, so you can't see it. So again, just press that down. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and in and you could see because this is your outside it's going to get shoved in like that. You could see it. So you're going to do the same thing. You're just going to make a little, you can either just do two or you can make a little square either one on right here. And then that's it for your clip. Um, but what you're gonna do before we finish for today, we have literally one more thing. Sorry if it feels like I'm rushing. I need to get my kid here in a second. Um, you need to take your back piece, fold it in half. Know where the middle is, so. And then all you're gonna do and oh, now I realize you need to put these right sides to right sides, right? Or sorry, wrong sides to right sides. Um, there would be no flipping, so this is how it would be, okay? Wrong side to right side. And basically all you're gonna do is you're gonna go to baste this puppy down. So just make sure you have them in the middle. It's basically, uh, there's like maybe a little bit on each side that's not covered by that. Um, and then you just go ahead and go base that down. So go ahead and do that and sew your little square right here and come on back. Okay, and then you're all done. And then you can just check to make sure it works um, to snap it in and then snap it in. So then it would look like so, okay? Um, I personally don't leave this on here. Um, while I finish sewing the bag, or while I flip because it is kind of in the way. It's not, it doesn't need to be in anything. Um, so it's perfectly fine just like this. So that's pretty much it for day four. You'll have had this guy, and you'll see whenever 
you sew these two together um, like so that your strap and this should be in the middle of each other. Um, I have sometimes, if I feel like my thing's a little off, uh, just move my strap to, to be in the middle of that. But again, uh, we'll see how that goes. It's and Things don't, aren't always perfect. But anyway, uh, one more day and we're all done. Thanks for sticking with me, guys. Okay, bye.